Is Rochester, Michigan the perfect place to call home? Well, I hate to burst your bubble because there's no such thing as perfect, but be sure to stick around because I want to take a deep dive into the amazing qualities of this fine city, along with some of the things people very much dislike, and you can decide if you're compatible or not. Stay tuned. I created a video a couple weeks ago about the top 10 best places in Southeast Michigan, which I will link in the description, and I included Rochester on the list. April called me out and told me I never mentioned this area very much and asked for my thoughts. So I'll lay the good, the bad, and my personal experiences out for you so you can make an informed decision going forward. The city of Rochester is located in Oakland County and is about 3.83 square miles in size with a population with just over 13,000 people. The city gets interchangeably mixed up with Rochester Hills, which is its identical twin, not because they are similar in any way. They are just extremely close to each other and seamless in one another, sharing a school district and all. But I will be tackling just Rochester, which has a lot to offer for a little city, so be sure to stick around. Kicking this list off with the good, the great, the amazing things about Rochester, Michigan, we have the downtown area. For those of you out there who have spent some time in the downtown space, I am sure you can agree with me here. The heart of the downtown area on Main Street is lined with historic buildings, unique shops, and casual to upscale, drool-worthy eateries. It's one of those downtown spots that's perfect for leisurely strolling, especially with all the community events such as the Spring Gallery Stroll, Heritage Festival, Music in the Park, Rock and Rods in Rochester, Farmer's Markets, Soapbox Derby, River Day, Movies in the Moonlight, Art and Apples Festival, the Hometown Christmas Parade, along with the thousands of strands of lights that cover all of the buildings in downtown Rochester, bringing in thousands of people each year during the holiday season, where you can stroll with a warm beverage and not break the bank on something to do. I'll put a link in the description to the events page. That list was probably extremely overwhelming, so you have something to refer back to. This downtown space has walkability, which creates an amazing atmosphere. There are so many local businesses in town too, which gives you a very diverse catalog of products and services. With that being said, it creates a tight-knit community with these business folks looking out for each other in a scratch my back, I'll scratch yours mentality. This downtown is also extremely clean, which I can't say 100% for the other downtowns across Southeast Michigan. Every time I go down there, I feel like I need to take my shoes off before I even step on the sidewalk. Anyway, moving on over to number two, we have history and heritage. This is something that is so often overlooked when looking for a new place to call home, as several areas have a good or bad history that has made the city and community what it is today. For example, I made a video a little while back about the pros and cons of Dexter, Michigan. That community had a massive tornado wipe out several homes and the community came together to rebuild what had been taken away. So that overall relationship deepened and created some good out of the bad. Rochester's history, although not as catastrophic as Dexter's, goes back into the early 1800s when what was once a village had explosive growth industrialization, modernization, and in this century, the focus is on the preservation and revitalization of Rochester's historic character by keeping the charm intact. When a community makes such a large effort to preserve history, it says a lot about their character, I'd say, whereas other communities just let those things slip through the cracks a little bit. So be sure to take a look at the Western Knitting Mills, Meadowbrook Theater, the Opera House, and the Rochester Elevator, even though it has permanently closed from what I last heard when you make a visit. Moving right along to pro number three, parks and recreation. I'll talk more about this in the cons, but Rochester often gets that reputation of being a concrete jungle. Cars, traffic, horns, stoplights, etc. And people tend to let that live in their mind rent free, but they lose sight of the amazing parks and recreation features throughout the city. Not only does this city have several golf courses for you single glove wearers out there, there's the 70 plus acre Rochester Municipal Park, Howlett Park, Bloomer Park on the border of Rochester and Rochester Hills, along with the 8.9 mile Paint Creek Trail that goes along Paint Creek from Rochester to Lake Orion. And of course, there's the several events I mentioned that will occur in a few of these parks throughout the year. And of course, that's, that's in the link in the description. On to the last pro until we switch over to the cons. Coming in at number four is the location. I know I say location is amazing for most cities in Southeast Michigan since the interstates and the expressways 
are always relatively close to a certain extent, but the reason I want to talk about Rochester's location is more about the job opportunity than anything else. With the pandemic forcing us to work from home, I use air quotes because we loved it, don't lie, then it started to transition into several people having to work a couple days a week in their offices, while there was a huge push from people during the pandemic saying, screw it, I want to live where I want to because I am remote now, to present day, having to drive more these days sucks, I want my commute to be a little nicer. So with this buyer behavior in mind, Rochester becomes a pretty appealing city, especially if you're in the automotive industry or work for a large corporation in another industry. Troy, Rochester Hills, Auburn Hills, and even Pontiac are home to several large corporations that are employers to thousands and thousands of people throughout Southeast Michigan. So being in close proximity is great for your commute, but also a big appeal when factoring in resale value. Moving right along to the bad, the gross, the icky about Rochester, Michigan, kicking off with number one, we have the traffic. I mentioned this a couple times previously and I made it number one on the cons list, not because it's the biggest deciding factor on whether or not you call this city your home, but more so because it's the most frequent complaint for people who live and have lived in the area. Rochester has done a great deal of modernization over the last few decades, but with its little size, it can feel the city is bursting at it seems sometimes, especially because the city has so many unique offerings that bring a lot of people like myself into the city. With that in mind, I wouldn't say the parking situation is as much of a headache as it is in Ferndale and Royal Oak. That could just be my opinion. I just haven't had issues in Rochester. The only advice I can give you about this con is to plan your commutes accordingly. Keep in mind the city is a popular one and understand you'll do a little waiting. The city wasn't built for all these people. Stepping over to con number two, we have the cost of living. Taking a look at this graph provided by the multiple listing service, you can see the blue line, which shows the whole MLS in Michigan as a whole, the city of Rochester and yellow, and of course, Rochester Hills and green. I added that for giggles and I'm sure you would have wondered anyway. This is the average sale price and how it was progressed over the last three years. Rochester comes in at just over $462,000 and Rochester Hills is at $415,000 and some change. The home prices aren't off the charts high like Birmingham or Bloomfield Hills by any means, but there's still a hardship for some buyers out there to crack into this market. Another thing I figured I could spread some awareness to, as it's often a frequent question from everyone out there, is property taxes. So I'll hop on the Michigan property tax estimator here, punch in $231,000, which would be half of the average sale price in Rochester, based on that graph I just showed, for the number one spot here. It says SEV or state equalized value and people will just take that off public data or listing sheets and it won't be very accurate. So simply use 50% of the home's list price to be more accurate on your estimates. Of course, the best way to be even more accurate is to contact the local assessor's office to break it down. But if you're just curious and want something more accurate than Zillow is throwing at you, do this. I'll link a video I did with a Michigan assessor in the description if you wanna know more about figuring out property taxes as well. In spot number two, you'll put Oakland County. Spot number three, you'll find Rochester. Number four is Rochester Community School District, and after that, it will pump out the millage rates and the approximate taxes for homestead versus non-homestead. Keep in mind it says 2021 millage rates, and in little writing at the bottom, it says the 2022 rates will be posted in August 2023. So if there was a drastic change in the city services, this would not be so accurate, but again, better than what is typically done. Moving along here, it's safe to say that a lot of the cost of living aspect comes down to your lifestyle choices. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of local businesses in Rochester, so they tend to charge a little more, so the cost of goods and services tend to be a little higher. Big box stores can make things cheaper and in bulk, and some of these items could be handmade and took hours and hours to create. So. It makes sense, but it's something to keep in mind. Rochester is a place that has earned the reputation of being what the kids like to call bougie or an area for rich or upper class people. There's expensive real estate here, that's no secret whatsoever. There's several upscale establishments from eateries to grocery store. It's all a preference at the end of the day and there's options for anyone along the financial spectrum. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that because I see comments like that floating around when it comes to Rochester all the time. Last but not least, coming in at con number three, the nightlife. I know some people's ears perked up a little bit when I said the downtown is amazing and that must mean the nightlife is awesome too. Well, not so much. 
As a Southeast Michigander, when you think of nightlife, you think about Royal Oak, Ferndale, Ann Arbor, and of course Detroit. Rochester doesn't exactly compare to those cities unless they have some community event that hangs around after hours. Most times, the city tends to be relatively quiet at nighttime. Of course, the city is awesome for those leisurely strolls at any time of the day, but you won't be seeing fist pumping with a drink in the other hand. Not so much in this town. Those cities I mentioned give off that hip and modern vibe. Rochester is the established and historical vibe. Again, it's all preference. Some people want a wild and loud nightlife in a sweet downtown area. Others want a calm and quiet downtown space. Rochester, Michigan offers a tight-knit community with a charming downtown, excellent schools, and plenty of outdoor recreation opportunities. However, it also has a higher cost of living, limited public transportation, and a relatively quiet nightlife scene. As with any place, it's important to carefully consider your preferences and needs before making a move to a place like Rochester, or anywhere for that matter. With all that being said, what are your thoughts about Rochester, Michigan? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you need help relocating, buying, or selling a home in Rochester or a nearby area, feel free to reach out anytime. My contact information is in the description below. Thank you as always for watching. If this video provided you some value, be sure to hit the subscribe button, give it a big old thumbs up, and hit that little bell so you never miss out on an upload. Until next time.